Hi everybody. Uh, I was recently asked a question about surface agitation in my tank and why I have so little. Uh, it was also sort of suggested that I didn't have enough for some reason. So that's not the first time that's cropped up. I've been asked that before. I do keep very little surface agitation in my tanks. I like my water nice and calm and still on the surface. And so I think it's about time I finally address that and we're going to talk about uh, gas exchange, uh, surface area, agitation, circulation, filtration, all that stuff. So we're probably going to go around, we're going to look at a lot of my different tanks and look at the way I've got them set up. So we're going to start here with the 125, but first we are going to talk about how gas exchange actually works and what's going on in the process. Um, I've talked before about osmosis and osmosis begins with the understanding of the process of diffusion well that's exactly what's going on when it comes to the gas exchange it's simple diffusion it's a process that happens naturally and it happens passively when you've got higher concentrations of one gas in the water than you do outside the water the higher concentration will simply try to move to the lower concentration. So if you've got CO2 building up in the tank, the CO2 will tend to want to leave the water and the oxygen will tend to absorb into the water as the balance shifts. So you do not really even need to have any kind of uh, filtration on your tank at all in the sense of an actual filter filter. You do need some circulation in the tank. You do need to make sure the water actually at the surface does exchange. Um, and when I say exchange, I mean you need to move the volume of water in the tank around so that the lower oxygenated water is able to come in contact with the surface area and the higher um, carbon dioxide you know can move around and, and and the gas exchange can happen properly at the surface is what I'm trying to say uh, if I can get through that um, so back in the old days they didn't even have filters on tanks if you actually do the math I'm sure there's some kind of calculation that if you have a certain amount of surface area per volume of water that's enough to just allow the gas exchange to happen naturally without any, um, you know, added intervention at all. So in a situation with my tanks where I have all these plants, I'm actually also adding oxygen to the water constantly without doing anything other than letting the plants grow. So recently I did make a comment about if my tanks were any more low tech, the only thing you could do would be to take the filters and the lights off. Um, and I was joking when I said that, but that's the truth, really. I mean, there's not a lot you could do to make them any more low-tech. Now, in this case, I couldn't take my lights off because we're in my basement and I wouldn't have any kind of natural lighting, so my tanks would crash. Uh, but I could take the filters off. I could actually run this tank without a filter at all, and I could simply have this power head. In fact, I could have a much, much smaller power head than that. Uh, in this tank and I can still manage this tank absolutely fine with no filter whatsoever now I know that sounds hard to believe but it's the truth uh, I've done videos in the past where I talk about the main purpose of your filter is to move water around your tank that moves water over your biomedia and it also moves water around the surface so that you get your proper gas exchange. The physical filtration, the, the detritus that's being removed from the tank, that's a bonus. I mean, that's nice for the eye, but it doesn't really change anything. It doesn't affect your tank in any way. That stuff's still in your tank. It's just not in your line of sight. All that stuff is still trapped in that water that you're looking at. It's just not moving around in the water column necessarily. And it's, you know, but it's still breaking down. It's still, you know, getting your water dirtier and dirtier as your filter gets clogged up. So really, if you're willing to get in there and just vac the physical detritus out uh, on a regular basis, you don't really need the filter at all except to move the water around. So if you've got a nice big fat power head that's moving the water around regularly, that would be plenty for a tank like this. I could go even lower tech than my tank already is here. So if we start looking at my actual water surface, this is the still end of the tank where this big plant right here kind of blocks everything and gets in the way and you can see the water doesn't move around very much or so it would appear. If you look closely, 
you can see the little bits of detritus in the water. I've actually got quite a bit of water moving around this tank. My filter is moving 525 gallons nominal and this power head is moving an additional 850 gallons an hour nominal. So that's plenty of water movement in a tank like this. The fact that the surface is not rippling and foamy is not impacting this tank at all. As I said, I could remove my canister filter altogether and all I would have to do was do so slowly enough uh, that I allowed the nitrifying bacteria that grows on the surface area to build up in the tank itself. And then once that was established, I could actually take the filter off because right now, the bulk of my biofiltration is in my filter. So that is necessary at the moment, but it's not necessary for gas exchange. If you look at my spray bar, you can see I've got the first segment turned sort of upwards and towards the back. So it does give me a little bit of surface agitation. I get a little bit of rippling effect on the water. I do like some movement. I don't want it to look like a completely stagnant pond. But the rest of the spray bar is angled downward and against the back glass. So I get all this water that flows down flows across the bottom and then back up this front glass and I get this sort of swirling effect and it gives me a tremendous amount of uh, exchange at the surface which is all you need you don't need bubbling foamy ripply water so if we look over here at this tank while I'm down here uh, this is my gudgeon tank and again I've got you know that much agitation on the surface it's more than some tanks but it's not a lot and it's you know it's not necessary it just really isn't I've got a lot of water circulating around through this tank it's planted and there's only two fish in it there's no way that I'm going to have gases build up to the point where I'm getting imbalances in the gas if we look at my brackish tank here and this is probably one of my worst tanks and it's only because I got the cyanobacteria growing in there I uh, have been working on this, so bear with me. We'll get there eventually. Um, but once again, let's get played somewhere where we can actually see without the glare of that light. Again, not a ton of surface agitation. This is a little more, again, than some of my other tanks, but not a ton. Uh, this tank has very still water down this end because of all the leaves and everything. And then, you know, once again, just not a ton of surface agitation. It's really not necessary. When people put air stones in their tank, uh, that's doing two things to increase the gas exchange. It's first of all, you're not increasing the oxygen by putting an air stone. You're simply facilitating the you know, the, the gas exchange. You're simply allowing the gas exchange to equilibrate naturally by increasing the surface agitation. Because again, increasing the surface agitation will uh, increase your gas exchange and in some cases it may be necessary but it's not necessary under most circumstances um, so what it, what the air stone does is it actually pulls water from the bottom of the tank where the lowest concentration of oxygen is because it's the furthest away from the surface and it just rises it up to the surface and moves it across the surface and it swirls around and goes back down and you're basically just circulating the water using the air stone the other thing is that it does gently and mildly increase the surface area in your tank uh, if you think about if you were inside of a bubble and you were able to look around at the inside of the bubble, 360 degrees around you would be surface area between air and water. So that is a fair amount of surface area, but those bubbles are pretty tiny. I know there's a lot of them, but that's not a lot of surface area necessarily. The chief thing an airstone does is pull water from the bottom of your tank and move it up to the top of your tank. And that's where the gas exchange actually happens is right here on the surface. Now in this tank, I will say, um, first of all, there's a look at my shrimp while he's out. This, uh, ghost shrimp that you can now see pretty clearly because of his darkening color. He's almost two years old. I've never heard of anybody having a ghost shrimp live two years, but he's getting there. He'll be two in a couple of more months. Uh, recently, I did a treatment on this tank for the red um, cyanobacteria, which I did not do effectively because I didn't put an air stone in it. I let the water level drop a little bit so that I had sort of a waterfall effect from the two filters and I thought that that would be enough 
uh, gas exchange for the product I had put in there. Now the product specifically says to put an air stone and it says that you need a great deal of gas exchange because the process uses the oxygen up very rapidly. So again, you're not adding oxygen per se, but as the oxygen's being used up, you really need to rapidly turn that water over at the surface in order for the gas exchange to equilibrate the CO2 and the O2 from the air you know, to the water. So I didn't do that, and one of the gobies in there died, and I think I probably just used the oxygen up to the point where it wasn't an effective treatment, and it also killed one of my fish. So I think that's where I went wrong, uh, and that is a good... Uh, learning curve a little you know another little mistake I've made that teaches me about aeration and water circulation so under everyday circumstances the normal functioning and running of a tank I can very easily get away with surface agitation as mild as this and if we look over here at my t-bar tank uh, once again we can see a few ripples on the surface but the plants largely break that up and this whole side of the tank is more or less still. I do have a UV filter in the back angled up so you can see some ripples going on over there. Uh, I do have a little bit of surface agitation over on that side. But again, from some tanks that I've seen, you know, some people would probably think that that's not even any surface agitation at all. So, you know, again, I've had people recommend that I add surface agitation. I was never really sure about why that is. I've been sort of told that I don't have enough uh, surface agitation in my tanks and you know you can clearly see how terrible all my tanks look so obviously I'm doing something wrong I just I've never got that I've never understood why people tell me you need to add surface agitation um, again I like that little first section turned upward to give me a few little ripples across the surface um, pretty typical of my tanks one end is where all the vegetation tends to float and then if we actually looked from the top down, which I suppose we could do easy enough. Maybe. You know, not a lot of surface agitation going on in the plants in there. I've even got duckweed in here that I've never ever been able to get out. All you got to do is miss one of them and the next time you look in your tank you'll have duckweed again. <laughs> it never goes away. But, you know, this is the more agitated end of the tank. And that's what we're looking at. We'll look at my Garami tank here. It's the same way. We've got this end of the tank is very heavily planted. So we've got no surface movement at all. And then this end of the tank is fairly well covered. But we do have a little bit of movement over here. But when we actually look in the tank, make sure I'm not going to back into anything. There's not enough room for any surface agitation to happen. I'm struggling with my focus here. There we go. Um, there's, there's just too many plants. Now granted, I really do need to get in there and thin that out a little bit. That's getting a little ridiculous. The tank is getting so dark uh, that when you stand in front of it, it doesn't hardly come out on camera anymore. Um, but the purpose of this video is just to show the surface agitation that I have in my tanks. This is my 29 miscellaneous. And once again, this is one of my oldest tanks that ticks over like a machine without ever, ever having any issue. And if you can see, I've got, you know, virtually no water movement on the surface of this either. Now, I do get a little bit of that oily film in the tanks that I don't have a surface skimmer. That is something I have to deal with. If you want to reduce that, then sure, have bubbles, have surface agitation. That will break that up. Uh, the, the added oxygen and the bubbles on the surface will break that up and dissolve it. So, you know, there's downsides to having a very calm, still surface, but to me, it's no big deal. When I do a water change, all I do is, uh, from time to time, when that film's getting too much for me, again, if it's a tank that I don't have a surface skimmer, I just skim it manually with a pitcher while the water's draining, and I pull a few gallons out that way into a bucket, and when I'm done, the surface of the water has no more film on it, you know. Or, if you really want, you can spritz it down with uh, hydrogen peroxide, and that'll break it up and dissolve it, too, although I don't recommend doing it that way. It's not nearly as effective is simply skimming it very easily so 
there you go you do not need a ton of surface agitation you simply need a lot of circulation to allow for the water to exchange at the surface level and the gases will naturally equilibrate just simply through the process of diffusion if you've got a lot of plants in your tank you're you're dumping oxygen into the, the tank all the time um, the the amount of fish you have as far as how much bacteria uh, all of that's going to play a part in how much, you know, how rapidly the oxygen gets used up and how much CO2 is produced. So there's no one formula necessary that can say how much surface area you need, how much surface agitation you need, or um, just how much circulation you need in the tank. My minimum idea for circulation in my tanks is about 10 times. So for these 55 gallon tanks, I would want, not necessarily through my filter, but I would want at least 10 times the volume of the tank moving around every hour. So at least 550 gallons an hour moving around the tank. Now I usually double that when you add my filtration. I've got 525 in the filter and then I think I've got another uh, 500 gallon uh, or it might be a 350 gallon power head in this tank I'm not sure uh, I've got a 350 gallon in one of these and then I've got a 500 gallon in the other one I can't remember it's been so long since I've put them in uh, but yes believe it or not I have a 550 gallon power head and a 525 gallon uh, per hour filter on one of these tanks and then I think it's this tank I think this is the one that's got the bigger power head on it because of all the the uh, other stuff in the tank it really diffuses the flow of the water and then uh, sorry for the tennis match uh, camera work here uh, but this tank I believe has the uh, 350 gallon per hour power head in the other corner so there you go plenty of circulation plenty of water movement plenty of turnover at the surface and you should be fine you do not necessarily need bubbles bubbling around in your tank all the time so once again that's my two cents i'd love to hear your comments and your thoughts on the subject uh, it is something as i've said that i get plenty of comments about uh, get plenty of questions about so if you've got any more by all means go ahead and leave them down below thanks for watching this one if you're not already subscribed go ahead and do so uh, that way you don't miss anything I got coming up. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next one.